ESPN Networks. Nice penetration by Central Eagles. Delvin Dickerson, the post guy, drives, finds an inside basket for Benton. Benton scores a lot of points within five or ten feet of the basket. Stay in our first look at Jonathan Wade. First team all Miak, second in the league in scoring. Number three in yellow for Norfolk State. Both of these teams are very strong defensively. They're very active. Got a lot of deflections. Robinson comes up short. Board to Benton. And Graff lost it. Fortunate not to turn that one over. Central can be a very deliberate team. They involve a lot of high pick and rolls. They get their post guys in things. And their guards are quick enough to turn the corner. Norfolk's going to have to play a solid defensive game to win today. Catch and shoot, Madison for three. That's what Rashad Madison can do. His 87 three-point basket of the season. An eight-nothing run for the Eagles of NC Central. Based out of Durham, North Carolina, about 185 miles southwest of here. And there are a lot of people in maroon and gray that made the trip up here, too. I'll tell you what, you don't know if this is a Norfolk crowd or a North Carolina Central crowd. Inside the foul will go against the Spartans. And our first time out, the number one seed out in front by four, four and a half minutes in here in Norfolk. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Land Rover, above and beyond. Range Rover Sport, Land Rover, above and beyond. I'm uh, very sorry. And we're going to get the phone, his phone, uh, out of you as soon as... I have to, I have to do this. What? Just a little pinch. Sweetheart, Hi, I left my phone in... Totally out of way. I'm having phone issues. Bye. Uh, we're going to fix this, needless to say. Okay, w resuming play. Snickers satisfies. Choose your civilization. China. America. Korea. Japan. Europe. World War Ebony. Ebony, the King's Return. Download now. Champ Week's biggest night begins tonight at 6 on ESPN. Here, beautiful Norfolk, Virginia. An 8-4 lead for the number one seed, North Carolina Central. And it's great to have you with us alongside of Stan Luter, Roy Philpott, courtside. It's kind of what you want this time of year. You got the best in this conference going toe to toe. You got some star power to talk about too. You got number one and number two teams in the conference. They've been battling all season. You've got two of the best players in the conference. One, Jonathan Wade, 32 games. He scored in double figures. They played 32 games. 56 three-pointers. He scores a lot of ways off the bounce, gets some steals and scores. And then the player of the year, that's Patrick Cole. 164 assists. People forget he's a very good passer. 19-point average the player of the year. Can score a lot. In the long history of North Carolina Central University, Patrick Wade, the first to have a triple-double, had that against Jackson State early in the season. And if the Eagles are going to win this game, it's going to be because either of his shooting or passing, more times than not, both. Inside. And the look to Benton. Oh, the pump fake and swatted away. That was Butler that got in there. Well, he's an unselfish player, but there are other guys in this NCCU arsenal can step up and make plays as well. Deshaun Madison can score the basketball. Dewan Graff and, and Kyle Benton can be a dominant force inside. Cole off the glass. The blocking foul, the call. And our veteran officiating crew will have a quick conversation. Basket will count. That'll be goaltending. So a chance for three the hard way. 
transition basket, something the Eagles live off. There's Cole with the drive, a little contact, and up high, there's the block shot. Take another look, Jordan Butler. Talking to Butler the other day, he said, I love the block shots. One of the best in the Mideastern Athletic Conference, very physical, can run the floor, had 55 blocks on the season, led this conference. Pat Cole, the MEAC Player of the Year, in attack mode early. The lead swells to six. Well, when he's attacking, he's scoring, he's passing, he's playing great defense. They look for him for his leadership. Had a ball game early in the year against Hampton where he picked up some early fouls. They still came on to win. He led them off the floor that day with his emotions. Okoro, really not his shot. Off the mark, wide right. Norfolk State. Needs to be very, very careful right now. I know they want to get off to a good start, but they're taking some bad shots. The guys that need to shoot the ball aren't taking those shots. One of those guys being Jonathan Wade, number three. And for those just joining us, Norfolk State jumped out to a 4 0 lead. Since in a 10 0 run by the Eagles and another turnover. And to the bench, Okoro. Coming in is Kyle Williams. Williams long, athletic, can defend on the perimeter, can make the three-point shot, third best on this team. Cole nearly traveled, rejected, and out of bounds, back to the Spartans. If you're not a good side defensive team, Cole can eat you alive because he will drive to the baseline and either score or kick back for making passes. That time, Norfolk State did a really good job of defending it, making him turn the ball over. As many assists as he had last year, 164, he also had 113 turnovers. Williams, the jump shot, and a foul inside. Robert Jones here, number four, the Spartans program, 17 and 15 this season. And you see his numbers overall. Call that a shooting foul as Williams will head to the stripe. Stan, I like what you said, the importance of this opening sequence. North Carolina Central won the only regular season matchup by 15 back in mid-January. It was a six-point game at halftime, right. and, and, and Central made shots, defended better, forced him into a drought. But you're right, the, the early part of this game is going to set the tail for later on in this ballgame. Well, Moten, year number eight. Born in Boston, played with North Carolina Central, won the MEAC back in 2014 for losing to Iowa State in the NCAA tournament. All three free throws good by Kyle Williams. It's a one-possession game. Moten, one of the big-time scorers in North Carolina Central history, in the top five all-time. You're talking about guys like Sam Jones and listening to that. Oh. Rav swatted away. Out of there comes Zanai Robinson. Beautifully executed with a jump stop. They feel they can score some baskets in transition. The mid-post area, they can get some baskets, especially if Robinson will pull up and take the short jumper. But it starts for Norfolk State today on the defensive end. They led the league in block shots, averaging close to six a ball game. Dickerson goes to work. The jump hook in the paint. Well, we've seen the versatility of Dickerson already. He had to pass early, made an easy basket. This time goes in live, little fly jump hook. Baseline, here's Alex Long, contested shot well short. Cole thought about it, wanted the whistle, didn't get it. Now the conference play of the year, you normally gets that call. Here's Williams on the other end. Long on the offensive glass, barrels his way inside. That's an offensive foul, his first. This ties the defender. If anything, could have been an offensive foul. He jumped into the defender, and then you try to get a transition. He says, okay, you're not going to call this foul. How about that one? Takes the offensive foul, gets the play. Doing it on both ends. The player of the year, Patrick Cole. Three-point game. Into the contest for the first time. It's a seven-footer, Dan Robinson, 44 for Norfolk State. The center of the lane as we speak. Robinson, another one of those... Big athletic post guys for Norfolk State. Loves to block shots. Off a trapping pressure. Beautiful ball movement. Cole makes him bang. The 
Yeah, we've seen the versatility of Cole and also Madison. Madison had 86 threes on the year, Cole 65. Lead good is back start. to six. Yeah, good start for NCCU. On the backdoor cut, kick ball. And how about the big man, Jordan Butler, trying to feed his guard, Williams, on the cut. Norfolk State's not going to be able to win this basketball game if they don't find a way to get Jonathan Wade involved, either as a scorer or as a passer. And if he passes, post guys have got to be ready to score. Boy, right on cue, the corner triple. Wade, one of the top three-point shooters in the MEAC, came in having made 56 of 145. And shooting a solid 49% from the floor this year. And inside the triple team on Benton and the quick whistle. Now the two stars shining brightly here at the MEAC Championship. A three-point lead for the Eagles here inside of Scope Arena. Pat Cole getting the job done, as he always has in his senior campaign. And the answer by Jonathan Wade. Oh, devour. So creamy. The little sounds your crispy bacon makes drive me crazy, you naughty little. Did you just spank your lunch? Yeah. Devour. Food you want to fork. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. It's back, and it's front. No, really, the Triple Double Crunch Wrap Big Box is back, and it's still all mains, no sides, with a Doritos Locos taco, a crunchy taco, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Just five bucks, only at Taco Bell. I love how USAA gives me the peace of mind and the security just like the Marines did. At one point I did change to a different company with car insurance and I was not happy with the customer service. We have switched back over and we feel like we're back home now. The process through USAA is so effortless that you feel like you're a part of the family. I love that I can pass a membership to my children and that they can be protected. We're the Williams family and we're USAA members for life. Call USAA today to talk about your insurance needs. Well, the drama continues later tonight over on ESPN. Champ Week as Iowa State and West Virginia battle for the Phillips 66 Big 12 title. We'll follow that up the New York Life ACC championship game between Duke and Notre Dame. That's at 9 Eastern in the Pac-12 title affair presented by New York Life. Caps off the night 11 o'clock Eastern. Number one seed Oregon, two seed Arizona. All three streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. On Selection Sunday Eve, here we go. Back inside Scope Arena, a one-possession game in the MEAC title game with Stan Luter, Roy Philpock. Great to have you with us. Dickerson off the glass is too strong. We'll somehow get it back, restart the offense with the Florida Gulf Coast transfer, Dewan Graff. Two programs, both with one NCAA tournament appearance on the resume. Norfolk State upset number two seed Missouri, and it's only time. It's back in 2012, and the rebound, here come the Spartans. But before both of them were in the MEAC, they were in the CIAA for many, many years. Norfolk State won 11 championships. North Carolina Central won one and a national championship in the late 1980s under Mike Bernard. Ironically enough, Bernard coached at both schools, Norfolk State and North Carolina Central. I love it when you do your homework for these games. That's I, great. I lived it. I didn't have to do the homework on that. I saw it. <laughs> Basket by Williams off the glass, a spark off the Spartans bench, and a one-point game. Why do you think I'm sitting over here with you? He beat me when he was coaching at Norfolk State. Are you kidding me? Here's Cole. A wild sequence, a rebound cleanly by Williams. And the Spartans a chance for the lead. Butler is short. The board to Robinson, the seven-footer. And a steal by Cole. And here he comes. Miak player of the year. 
He'll shoot two. Huge play there. Very casual pass by Wade. He's intercepted. Zanai Robinson for Norfolk State now has his second foul. But this is the play of the year. Coming right at you, attacking. Got to let that ball go. Got to get in front of him, take the charge. Instead, Robinson now has his second foul. Second personal. Second leading scorer for Norfolk State. We'll talk things over with Robert Jones, his head coach, quickly. Pat Cole started his career at Coppin State, transferred to Siena, and then transferred to NC Central Stan, a growing trend in college basketball. But he's made the most of it. Now as a redshirt senior, originally out of New Jersey. Most feared player in this league this season. Well, he's got size. It's 6'4", 6'5". He's very strong, mature guy. And he understands the concept of getting the free throw line. He's one of the top free throw shooters as far as attempts in the conference. Williams the floater in and out. Rebound by Robinson outside the way. And the lid remains on for Jonathan Wade. Eagles did a great job of blocking out that time. Coley up and under. Rob Jones is going to have to do a better job in transition defense. NCCU is getting rebounds, and they're pushing the pace of this ball game. There's a the trap. Five-point lead, trapping pressure now for the Eagles of NC Central. And they use their size with traps, number 33 in the ball game. Big guys taking that guard away. Williams for three, and a spark off the bench again is number 24. Williams is a very good spot shooter. We talked about Wade, we talked about Robinson been able to score. Williams had 39 threes on the season. Stanley already has eight points this afternoon. Pat Cole leads the way for NC Central with nine. Against a seven footer. Controlled by Wade. Robinson likes to penetrate, and with the two fouls, he's got to be very smart, very careful with the basketball, his decisions. More than halfway through the first, Wade double team, 10 to shoot. A little shake and bake for Robinson, the step back is all that. Don't be deceived by 5'10's deny Robinson, 54 threes on the season, led the MIAC in assist but over 140. And a foul inside will go against Jordan Butler. He can't believe it. He was working against Pablo Rivas. And a quick whistle by our veteran officiating crew, Terry Moore, Quez Crawford, and Jack Sanders. Will actually whistle the foul on Okoro. State did a nice job getting back in this basketball game. Let's take a look if we can see the contact. There's a bump right there. I didn't see the arm up high. But they want to be physical. They want to be physical. And one of the things Norfolk State feels like they can do is try to get into the NCCU bench. They've got some size. 4064, Jonathan Wade, 64, Butler. And did not forget about Robinson, Micah Dawson, a guy that we haven't talked about yet. Jeleno, 6'11", Brian Jeleno, missed most of the season with a back end, but come in over the tournament and give him a spark. One of two at the line is NC Central down the bonus the rest of the first half. And the Eagles lead it by a point. More trapping pressure now out of North Carolina Central University. Okoro gets it back in the paint. Somehow gets it to go and a chance for three the hard way. Well, Stanley hung in the air forever that time. Kerwin Okoro, the senior from the Bronx. You, you attack traps. And then you try to go from the side to inside. And, and Norfolk State did a really nice job of attacking that pressure that time. The thing that would concern me is when Pablo Rivas, number 13, on Ron Trapps, number 33, try to trap on a perimeter. They're both 6'4 and 6'6, six, six, and they've got the size advantage over the smaller Robinson. Second personal on Pat Cole. Here comes Graff. The pump fake and an errant pass heads to the backcourt. Stolen by Robinson. Nice. Oh, they got to find a way to convert there. 
And they'll turn it over, a three-second violation. Lavelle Moten looking on in year number eight in Durham with the Eagles. His team trails by two, 7.49 remaining in the first. The markets can be very unpredictable. New York Life, on the other hand, is as consistent as my free throw shooting. They've paid a dividend to participating policy owners every year since 1854. It may not be sexy, but it works. Be good at life. New York Life. Chevy is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Really? Let's see how quickly you can read through all their awards. 2017 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Kelly Blue Book 2016 Best Resale Value. 2016 JD Power Highest Quality Ranking. Wow. 10 Best Blah Blah Blah. 2016. Only about 90 more to go. That's a lot of awards. <laughs> now through March 13th, get 20% below MSRP on all 2017 Spark, Impala, and Sonic models. That's over $8,000 on this Chevy Impala. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Everyone loves Taco Bell's iconic crunch wrap. And once again, we're taking that love to new heights. The one that got away is back in a big way. The bigger, beefier, triple double crunch wrap. Only at Taco Bell. Back inside Scope Arena, two point lead for Norfolk State, the number two seed, a chance to go to the dance at stake here in the MEAC title game. With State Luter Roy Philpott. Roy recognizing the trap. You see the double team here, but there's a wing open. We're going to keep this sequence going. You guys will let it roll. You try to get the ball to the side of the middle. There's a trap, and then you look inside. You see a cutter and another cutter. Great job by Norfolk. They go inside, reverse it, and then you've got an opportunity for a drive and a basket. You've got to move the ball from side to side, recognize the trap, try to throw over it, around it, or sometimes step through it. If Norfolk State can handle these early traps, they're going to be okay, I think, if their post will finish the plays. Here's Graff off the bounce. And inside, off the glass, down it goes for Rivas, his first basket. Both teams do a really good job of delaying. In other words, their post guys will drag to the end of the play to screen and then catch and score. Good basket inside. Tied at 22. Zone out of the Eagles. Robinson, the floater. Gets it to go. It was so smooth. Yeah, it is. And Rob Jones talked about the fact that he felt like he didn't play very well in their loss in January to North Carolina Central. He was going to take it upon himself to, to make the plays today. Other than the two fouls, he's had a solid ball game. Six points already for number two for Norfolk State. Cole forces one and somehow gets it to go. The strength of Patrick Cole. Cole with 11. Tied at 24. Well, Sam, we knew both of these teams could defend. The question is who was going to get hot. The answer so far has been really both sides. Sort of the game I anticipated. These are two high-scoring teams, both averaging over 70 points. Central number two in the MEAC, averaging 75. But they're good defenses. They score off their defensive pressure and their rebounding. In Norfolk State's case, the shot block ability. Cole went between the legs and fired that one out of bounds with too much mustard. Last touch by Kyle Benton. We watch Patrick Cole. We told you 29 double figure ball games. The ability to go inside, take a hit, and then finish the play. 156 free throws made this season. Not attempted, made. Are you kidding me? Well, you watch him play this season, and it feels like he's a man amongst boys, both with his skill set and also at times with his demeanor. He just understands the game. And he plays very hard. He's their leader. Open look for Wade. Back iron. Bounces out to Robinson, who thought about it. And with a fresh 30, will reset. Elbow jumper contested. <laughs> he looked like Vinnie Johnson in that sequence. The little big man, Zanai Robinson. He's got eight. The lead is two for the Spartans. Played on a good team down in Duluth, Georgia. Big Duluth High School in Atlanta. It's a very solid player. A lot of people kind of missed on this guy. Rob Jones said, I saw something special in him. Here's Graff attacking. Bounce pass. And the chippy missed by Benton. Gets it back. And he'll shoot a pair. See how they dragged the post at the end of the play? This is your guy, Roy. Watch Rob Robinson. Takes a little screen. Up and under. Adjust in midair. Counts it. Looking for the foul. Or looking for somebody to defend and steal the pass from. Jelano just picked up the personal. 
Benton at the line just 47% this season. It's been an entertaining first half here at the MEAC Championship. Yeah, it really has. It's what we expected. And an air ball. Well, you don't see that every day. Certainly a Sports Center not top 10 moment, Brad. Yeah. Well, he missed 10 games early in the season with injuries, had some knee problems. Not really a big score, but but gets a lot of those garbage baskets and that delayed pick and roll type thing. And he comes up and makes a better free throw there. You got an air ball the first attempt, all net the second. That's why he's about a 50% free throw shooter. <laughs> you're going to hit the rim, hit the floor, or make the basket. You, you, you can figure it out. You did major in math, didn't you? Not a bit. Robinson looking for the foul. <laughs> finally gets it. Lavelle Moten can't believe it. And the little man battling here in the first half. Already with eight points and four rebounds. This is why Robinson is such a hard to cover. He's quick enough. He splits the defender, and he's not afraid to go inside. There's a little contact right there by Ben. You can see maybe grab him across the top. Robinson goes to the free throw line where he's a much better free throw shooter. And Robinson at the stripe, 76%. First in the conference, an assist to turnover ratio this year. Also has a team high 51 steals. All 5'11", 180 pounds of them. If he can stay on the floor, Norfolk State's got a great shot at winning this basketball game. But the heart and soul of the Spartans is Zanai Robinson. Wade scores baskets. Big guys block shots and rebound. But they need their little engine that could. Zanai Robinson. Foul went against Benton. His first grab attacking. And nicely done using the rim as protection. Wanted the foul to go with it. Great job that time by Graff recognizing the mismatch with Okora. He's quicker than Okora to the basket. Graff with four, the transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. Part of that magical run back in 2013 all the way to the Sweet 16 for the Eagles. Okoro for three, and he answers. A nice spot jump shooter. Had three in the first game against North Carolina Central. Into that game with 21 points. Can make that shot, but it all started because of the creation by Robinson. Four-point lead for the Spartans, their largest of the afternoon. And a turnover in Norfolk State with momentum playing in front of the home crowd. A careless pass that time. They do they run to get into some of their sets, a little weave, a little three-man weave. They'll bring their post up high sometime, and they'll run plays off that. They'll send a post, shoot a post to the, to the low block. You've got to be able to defend it. They got careless in the pass. 22 to 12 run for the Spartans over the last eight minutes. Here's Long at the elbow, attacking. Tap back to Jeleno. One of the foul didn't get it, and now a fast break opportunity. Three fifty-eight remaining in a fast-moving first half. The lead is four for the number two seed. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Continental Tire. For what you do. We're led to believe each individual point is worth the same amount, regardless of when it's scored. Layups are always worth two points, theoretically. But fans know that's not the case because here in the last minute, everything counts for just a little bit more. Under 30 seconds, three pointers tend to feel like five. As for buzzer beaters, they're worth the whole shebang. This Tuesday on Blu ray, a man got to take care of his family. The world changing and you can't even see it. It's not easy to admit that I've been in the same place for 18 years. I've been standing with you. Fences on Blu-ray this Tuesday. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Sometimes just looking at a sandwich can fill you with pride. Just like how eating a sandwich 
can fill you with sandwich. Arby's, we have the meat. NBA Sunday Showcase. Bulls, Celtics, tomorrow on ABC. A country in need. Fan bases on edge. The bat signal sent to the bracket bunker, deploying tanks and Blackhawks. Joe Lenardi now on the front line. Bid stealers, bubbles bursting. The bracketologist, Joe, will join me on the Audi Halftime Report. Back to Roy and Stan. Well, Doug, thank you very much. The drama building for Selection Sunday. Hard to believe it comes tomorrow. A four-point lead here for Norfolk State. The MIAC, a one-bid league, and these two teams battling just like Vermont did earlier today. They punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. A win today does exactly that. It's been a back-and-forth affair so far. Three ties, a couple of lead changes. And the number two seed out in front. Keep your eye on this with the final 358, but Norfolk State's done a really nice job on the glass. 21 rebounds to 11. Nine of them have been offensive rebounds, and they're scoring in the paint. 12, 12 of the 31 points for the Spartans have been inside 12 feet. Norfolk State back in a 2-3 zone. Top of the key, Graff. Count it. DeJuan Graff, a long jumper, makes it a two-point game. Graff scores a lot of points because of the penetration of Cole, but a very streaky shooter and a very solid one-on-one -on -one player that's kind of underrated. Sparks with a two-point lead. Here's Zanai Robinson, nearly traveled. Jelano in no man's land. Outside of the Coral, that's been his spot, and it is again. Great ball movement. They used the big guy and Jelano to reverse it. Coro ready to take the jump shot when the ball comes to him, knocks it down. Norfolk State, 4 of 10 from bonus land. Coro with 9. Here's Graff, nearly traveled. No whistle inside, and Benton will shoot 2. Kyle Benton this season shooting a resounding 66% from the field. Nice dish inside. Great penetration this time by the Eagles in the drop down pass. Again, you've got to be able to stop the guard penetrating if you want to have success against NCCU. That time, Norfolk doesn't do it, and there's on the weak side. There's Kyle Benton ready to go to the free throw line again. Second foul on Alex Long. Stevie and Allen will check in. That's 13 for the Spartans of Norfolk State. And Alex Long with the two personals to the bench to join Jordan Butler. Stephen Allen comes in at 6'7", number 13 for the green and gold. Long is a good, solid defender. Let's see if he's going to try to pick up Graf or even Madison the next time down the floor if they stay in man. If they go back zone, he'll probably be on an end, a wing, and again, will shade to Graf's side. One possession game, approaching two and a half to play in the first half. Bell Moten wanted the five-second call, and he finally gets it. <laughs> well, I think he earned every dollar of his paycheck in that sequence. My goodness. Lavelle Moten, coach of the year, Hall of Famer at North Carolina Central. Brad, obviously, has done it all. Great player, and has taken this program to another level basketball-wise. A couple of runs in the postseason. Graff looking for three. Instead, he'll shoot two. Juan Graff. Richard Sr. from Charlotte, North Carolina. Rangy athlete. 75%, like that 79% at the line this year. You see his numbers overall. Foul went against Okoro. It's his second. Talk to Lavelle and talk to his coaching staff. And, and, and they have a no back down mentality. And they, don't, they don't mind getting into a bunker with you. You talk about Lenardi in a bunker. Hey, NCCU doesn't mind getting in there either. They'll play you tough defensively. They felt like they should have beaten Ohio State at the beginning of the season in Columbus. They knocked off Missouri. They should have beat LSU. They felt like it. They had, they had the game in their hands. Things didn't go their way. This is a tough, 
nasty, determined basketball team, the Eagles of NCCU. 14 on the shot clock for Wade. Graff now with eight. They try to split the double team, nearly turns it over. Five on the shot clock. Robinson, air ball, but the putback. Jelano in the right place at the right time. We talked earlier about Jelano coming off the injury, missed almost the entire season, but has come in and been a vital contributor at 6 feet 10, 6 11. He's got some really nice hands. Not going to play him long, but he's been very effective. Good putback. Very busy afternoon on the ESPN Networks. Champ Week rolling right along. Graf out of control. And a turnover. Thought that ball may have been deflected. Graf says, my bad. Maybe he knew something we didn't know. Fifth turnover for the Eagles here in the first half. 95 seconds remaining. Norfolk State's been impressive, weathered an early storm, trailing by six. After a semi-fast start and now a three-point lead, a chance to increase that margin. Well, we talked earlier about North Carolina Central being a veteran basketball team. Jonathan Wade's been around a while. Zanai Robinson, a three-year starter. Butler's been around. These guys have played some basketball, and, and they have the game kind of in front of them right now. They're playing the tempo they'd like to have. Here's a steal. Off to the races, Madison. The crossover. Count it. In traffic. And Robinson had to back away playing with the two fouls. A one-point game approaching a minute to play. With a double handoff between Wade and Robinson. Ten on the shot clock after the stutter step. The floater. And the putback. Allen racing towards the rim connects. Long athletic can get to the rim. A missed box out from the weak side by NCCU gets an easy basket by Allen. And Rob Jones explained to his guys, I gotta have that kind of hustle because we want to be a part of championship week. Hello? I just didn't recognize you. Sweet new ride. Thanks. Did you get a promotion? Wait, are you our boss now? You're the boss. I'm gonna need more vacation days. Oh, can I call in sick today? Guys, I don't have that kind of power. But I can park this car with my mind. Now you're just showing off. Lease the first ever all-wheel drive Infiniti QX30 crossover at your local Infiniti retailer. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Continental Tire for what you do. One of our favorite weeks of the year continues. Champ week, a one possession game and a 10 second differential between the game and shot clock here in Norfolk. Winner of this one punches their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Dewan Graff, the pump fake and an air ball. Benton wanted the foul, didn't get the whistle. Here comes Norfolk State. Ahead to Allen and the putback, Williams. Oh, he'll say the ball was on the rim. Interference, no points awarded. That's a big call that could have given Norfolk State a five-point lead. And instead, the Eagles get it back here, Stan. Let's take a look here. Off bounce, gets it up. Ooh. 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 That this looked like it was played. looked like it was coming off the rim. Ooh. Let's take another look at this. A very busy afternoon over on ESPN right now. The SEC, Kentucky, and Alabama later today. 3 o'clock tip between the three-seed Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Upset-minded and trying to punch their ticket as well. Championship coming up tomorrow also on ESPN, a 1 o'clock start. I hope the cable bills paid in my hotel room because I've missed a lot of ball games this week getting ready for the MEAC and watching ESPN's rolling this week on championship week. A lot of games. It's been fun. ACC championship tonight at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Duke and Notre Dame. Durham is hot right there. It's hopping in Durham. You got two teams in the championship. How about that. North Carolina Central, of course, and the Duke Blue Devils. Shot clock is off. And they're having watch parties. From a, a couple of people I know over the street residence in the Fitzgeralds in Durham. Watching the game. Watching Duke. Watching NCCU. Here's Graf. No whistle. Three ball on the way. Madison with a chance to tie. And he comes up just short. 
A three point lead for Norfolk State, the number two seed in the MEAC. As the Spartans were led by Zanai Robinson with 10 first half points, four rebounds, and three dimes to boot. Halftime report coming up right now as we send you to Doug Kazarian. Roy, thank you very much. This is the Audi Halftime Report over on ESPN. They're wrapping up the SEC semis, Alabama and Kentucky. Now, Cats trailed by as many as 10 in the first half, but UK coming back. Ban at a bio, thrown down the champs. So many talented freshmen for this UK squad. In transition, the steal, Dominique Hawkins, and the finish. Now, Joe Lenardi projects UK as a two seed. De'Aaron Fox buries the three. Wildcats have rallied, now lead three. Again, over on ESPN, final moments of the first half. Doug Kazarian alongside... The bracketologist, Joe Lenardi. We dragged him out of the bracket bunker. Going to share some wisdom. All right, Joe, let's talk about the Wildcats. What what are the impact? What's the impact of this game here on this two seed? Well, Kentucky playing for a two seed, certainly. Maybe an outside shot at a one. I know I've declared the top line locked, but Kentucky, Duke, the Pac-12 winner, they're all going into their championship games today hoping for the best. Uh, and we'll see what they can do here against Alabama. And Alabama has to win out. To get yeah, no a question. little bid there for the SEC. All right, let's check out action. You just saw here on ESPN2 the America East Championship game. Vermont, double digit favorite, ran the table in the regular season, but in I a dogfight. Tied final seconds. Peyton Henson, how about that move? The patience, the hoop, and the harm. He would make the free throw. Catamounts up three. Next Albany possession. Henson this time on the defensive end, drawing the charge. So we have a turnover with about 20 seconds left. But Albany comes up with the steal. No timeouts. Great Danes can go for quick two or the tying three. David Nichols off the mark and Vermont hangs on. They've won 21 straight going dancing for the first time since 2012. That means 14 tickets are punched. 18 remain. It's an exciting time with Selection Sunday, a day away. 18 and then another 36 right. at larges. So we're a long way from the finish line. And we're keeping an eye on all those tickets that yet to be punched. Joe Lenardi in-house here. URI firmly on the bubble in action right now in the A-10 semi semis. We'll have an update straight ahead. This halftime report is presented by Audi. It's back. And it's front. No, really. The Triple Double Crunch Wrap Big Box is back. And it's still all mains, no sides, with a Doritos Locos Taco, a Crunchy Taco, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Just five bucks, only a Taco Bell. When I first started working with Capital One, my dad called them up and asked for the Jennifer Garner card, which is such a dad thing to do. After he gave his name, the woman from Capital One said, Mr. Garner, are you related to Jennifer? Kind of joking with him. And my dad was so proud to tell her, as a matter of fact, she is my middle daughter. So now dad has the venture card, he's earning his double miles, and he made a friend of the company. Can I say it? Go ahead. What's in your wallet? <laughs> nice job, dad. Welcome to Stouffer's Fit Kitchen. Prime cuts of meat, 25 grams of protein, and savory mouth-watering sides. It's the perfect balance of delicious and nutritious, making it just the right fit for you. Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Meals. This is fit. It seems like every financial company talks about investing your way to wealth. But what about protecting what you're building right now? At Northwestern Mutual, we know the importance of doing both. We combine personalized investment solutions that help grow your wealth with world-class insurance that protects what matters most to you. This whole picture approach is just one of the reasons 96% of our clients stay with us year after year. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. The Verizon IndyCar Series kicks off tomorrow in St. Pete. Go get him, go get him. The countdown to the Indy 500 begins here. Great job. The Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, tomorrow at noon Eastern on ABC. You're watching the Audi Halftime Report. We've got conference tourneys all day. You better hit the big three. It's the Big 12. 
West Virginia, Iowa State. Then the big ballers of the ACC, Notre Dame, Duke, and a Pac-12 finale of Oregon, Arizona. Champ week, game on. What a time of year. And here's the latest on Joe Lenardi's bracketology, the bubble. Now five of the six teams are done with their conference tournaments. URI firmly on the bubble right there. First two out, knocking on the doorstep, needs a win today. Here we go, facing Davidson in the Atlantic 10 semifinals. URI red hot, nine of 12 from downtown in the first half, Joe. E.C. Matthews, of course, who tore his ACL in last season's opening game, has gotten a little bit more explosive as this season rolls along for the Rams. He's 4-4 four four from downtown. Rams up a dozen at the break. Check in on Michigan, also up double digits at halftime. What a week for the Wolverines. What a game for Mo Wagner, the big man, 5-5 five of five in the first half. Proves it doesn't matter what uniforms they wear, apparently. Yeah, had the practice jerseys a couple of games ago, had their regular unis yesterday against Purdue, and taking it to Minnesota, which is also red hot these days. Yeah, so whoever wins this game is going to really have a great shot in the final because of how well they played late in the season. Everyone said the Big Ten tourney was wide open, and they're proving it. Michigan up 11 over the Gophers. Obviously, don't count out Minnesota. The first ever Ivy League tournament of four teams, by the way. Princeton ran the table in the regular season. Darnell Foreman hits the three for Penn. More from the Quakers. No building had hosted more NCAA tournament games than the Palestra before the play-ins went to Dayton a few years ago. Great to see the postseason back at the big house on 33rd Street. This is the semis over on ESPNU. Penn up one. And that is a prime number, by the way, Joe. Uh, notable games today elsewhere. We have some semifinal action coming up next right here on ESPN2 in the American Conference. That's SMU. Got, got a little scare yesterday. What other games catch your eye? UCF, potential bid stealer. Same with UConn playing at home. That's right. You can't count out the Huskies this time of year. We know that. I use what's already inside me to reach my goals. So I liked when my doctor told me that I may reach my blood sugar and A1C goals by activating what's within me. With once weekly Trulicity. Trulicity is not insulin. It helps activate my body to do what it's supposed to do, release its own insulin. Trulicity responds when my blood sugar rises. I take it once a week and it works 24-7. It comes in an easy to use pen, and I may even lose a little weight. Trulicity is a once weekly injectable prescription medicine to improve blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes when used with diet and exercise. Trulicity is not insulin. It should not be the first medicine to treat diabetes or for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Trulicity if you or a family member has had medullary thyroid cancer. If you've had multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you are allergic to Trulicity, stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as itching, rash, or trouble breathing, a lump or swelling in your neck, or severe pain in your stomach area. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis, which can be fatal. Taking Trulicity with a sulfonyl urea or insulin increases your risk for low blood sugar. Common side effects include nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, decreased appetite, and indigestion. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may make existing kidney problems worse. With Trulicity, I click to activate what's within me. If you want help improving your A1C and blood sugar numbers with a non-insulin option, click to activate your within. Ask your doctor about once weekly Trulicity. I'll take a lemonade. That'll be $2.37. Your sign says a dollar. Yeah, but that doesn't include fees and added taxes. Fees and added taxes? They're all listed on your bill. Are you kidding me? There's the line access fee, the standing on my lawn fee, the fresh fruit high cost fee, the poison control surcharge. Don't pay more for taxes and fees. With T-Mobile One, taxes and fees are now included. For a limited time, get two lines of unlimited data for 100 bucks. All unlimited, all in. Everyone loves Taco Bell's iconic crunch wrap. And once again, we're taking that love to new heights. The one that got away is back in a big way. The bigger, beefier, triple double crunch wrap. Only at Taco Bell.
This halftime report is presented by Audi. All right, just a reminder, as soon as the brackets are released tomorrow, you can join us and have some fun on ESPN.com slash bracket, the 20th anniversary tournament challenge. Just a reminder, we have American Conference semis about an hour from now. Sterling Brown and SMU got a scare. Blew a 20-point-plus lead tie game in the final moments, but the top seed in the conference does, does advance to today's action. You will see that next from Hartford. This is kind of fun. UCF, Wade, loyal fan, of the Golden Knights tweeting out, hey, uh, can I get a note to leave work early to catch the basketball game? Pretty ridiculous, right? Oh, no! UCF responds, please excuse Wade from work at 2.30 today in order for him to cheer on Orlando's home team in the semifinals. Wade, one of our most loyal fans. We can prove that by the amount of tweets. Having a lot of fun <laughs> in March Madness. Zana Robinson leading the underdog Spartans of Norfolk State up three at the break, second half coming up. This has been the Audi Halftime Report. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. I am uh, very sorry. And we're going to get the phone, his phone, uh, out of you as soon as... I have to, I have to take this. What? Just a little pinch. Sweetheart, Hi, I left my phone in... Totally out of white. I'm having phone issues. Bye. Uh, we're going to fix this, needless to say. Okay, resuming play. Snickers satisfies. New in town. Witness protection program. I guess you need relocation consultation. With apartments.com, we can find something nondescript, yet extraordinarily comfortable with a 24-hour doorman and video security system. Well, if my name isn't Gary the Rat Patikoff. Oh, no. Well, that's good. Again? Uh, don't leave this, take this. Thank you very That'll much. It'll be useful everywhere. Change your apartment, change the world. Back inside Scope Arena, the MEAC Championship. Start of our second half, the two seed Norfolk State, a three point lead over number one seed North Carolina Central. Great to have you on board once again, Stan Luter and Roy Philpott. Kind of what we expected out of both of these teams, extremely competitive, very athletic, kind of back and forth affair. Pound you defensively. If you make a mistake, they're going to take advantage of it. Crash to glass. Players making plays on the offensive end. The two best teams in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, both on long win streaks throughout the season. Everything you want for a championship day. I've been waiting for it. Here it is. It's been a lot of fun. Second half beginning right now. Zanai Robinson, one of these stories in the first half with 10 points. Robinson's ability to handle the basketball, to penetrate, make the mid-range jumper. There's a crossover, a nice shot, 4 of 10 shooting. But his ability to stay on the floor and make plays, to create offense for Norfolk State is so important, especially in the second half. Memory plays two fouls. Also in two fouls is Patrick Cole, the leader, the MEAC player of the year. His strength, drive to the basket and score, takes the contact. That time off balance, kiss off the glass. Inside, then outside, nothing but the bottom of the net. Patrick Cole, Zanae Robinson have been nothing but the truth. They've lived up to billing in the first half of the MEAC championship. Also keep an eye on Jonathan Wade, just one for five to start this win. Three points as the leading scorer coming in for Norfolk State. Typically plays better in the final 20 minutes. Spartans may need him to do exactly that to advance to their second ever trip to the NCAA NCCU tournament. NCCU averages a lob. And in and out as Long couldn't find the basket. Central averages 39 points in the second half. Norfolk State 37. Cole lays it off. And with the bounce is Dickerson, a one-point game. What a quick momentum swing it could have been had you made the lob pass basket for Norfolk State. Central comes back and answers. ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi projects both of these programs as a 16 seed. Zanai Robinson off the side of the rim. Long battling, can't find it. 
One thing that, that Norfolk State did a really good job of, Roy, controlling the glass. They had 25 rebounds. And a brief stoppage as Dickerson hit the deck on the other end and appears to be in some pain. Delvin Dickerson, the senior from Houston, Texas. Take one more look. I think he took an elbow. Went on the top of the head, and Dickerson, he helped over to the bench. Dickerson, one of the many transfers, as we've alluded to earlier. Graf from Florida Gulf Coast. Dickerson transferred from Bowling Green. Patrick Cole spent a little time at Siena. These guys have you know, been around the block a little bit, but have come in and, and, and found a way to build as a team to take the Eagles to the top of the MEAC this year. Madison with a pump fake. Graf also tend to shoot. LaBelle Moten talking to his club in pregame labeled them as a bunch of misfits. Yeah. We don't yeah. belong, says everybody else, but we're going to prove them vastly incorrect today. But you know, that's one of the great things about HBCUs, is the Black College and University. They give guys that may have had some trouble academically or social trouble or whatever a second chance, maybe even a third chance, to get a degree and make something of your life. You've got to love HBCUs for that. Corralled by Rivas off the Coro miss. And a chance for the Eagles to go back out in front. McGrath has been so dangerous in this spot today. And again. You can't let Graf spot up and find his range. He'll knock down jumpers all afternoon. And now we're going to find out a lot about Norfolk State right now. Comfortable, had a chance to extend the lead, have not scored. The Eagles have put the defense on it. Scored in the second half. This is the guy that needs to get things going. It's Jonathan Wade. First team all conference this season and a foul. As Rivas picks up his first. Graf Silky smooth so far this afternoon. Yeah, Stan. watch him size this up. Gets the defender off balance a little bit, moving, gets enough space, and bam, knocks down the jumper. As we talked about, so much attention went to Patrick Cole. When you're trying to stop his drive and kick and then a spot up three points by Madison. And Graf just very quietly has a nice ball game, average 14 a ball game, pass threes, can defend. A very solid player, DeJuan Graf. Okoro nearly traveled, dumps it off to Long, who connects to tie the game. Norfolk State wins this ball game if their bigs can dominate. What I mean by that is if they got a rebound, They've got to defend, and they've got to score when the ball gets in their hands. They can't fumble it away. They've got to finish plays. Hold four for nine from the field to start this one. Shot was partially rejected. And tapped out of bounds. The foul will go against Norfolk State. So Robinson just picked up his third. Excuse me, Sam. Yeah, that's bad. That's not good. That's not going to be good for Spartans. You talk about a great job by Lavelle Moat. Rob Jones, has come. he was an assistant coach on the season of the year when they knocked off Missouri. Coach Evans left to go down to Florida for the international. Bam, he's taking the job. He's done a really good job. Inside to Cole. Gets his own miss. Rips it away in a held ball. Arrow will keep it with the Eagles. North Carolina Central 13 and 3, number one seed in the regular season. Another outstanding campaign by LaBelle Moton. With possession, tied at 40. NCCU continues to be able to get a lot of their offense within 10 or 12 feet of the basket, either off dribble penetration or either baskets or rebounds. Norfolk's got to keep them out of the paint. Cole. Drive there, see? And he makes you pay 13 points for Pat Cole. He elevates, goes up with the knees high and everything. I mean, you're scared to defend him. You don't know what to do. And you can fear the, feel the defensive intensity being ratcheted up a couple of notches by North Carolina Central. Butler can't finish. Long can on the putback. Good He's job, got six. Alex Long. So Butler back in with two personals as Alex Long also with two fouls as well. And the dump off Benton, too strong. 
Butler corrals. Here comes Norfolk State. And Okoro, too excited, just lost control. 11 turnovers now for the Spartans, Sam. Tied at 42, 15, 58 remaining. Pat Cole, MIAC Player of the Year, has already poured in 13 here inside the scope. NBA Sunday Showcase. Bulls, Celtics, tomorrow on ABC. The pension fund is being dissolved. I think I may rub a bank. Maybe you're having a stroke. We're gonna need help. Don't make me tell you. This is not an admission of guilt. I'm just tired. You know how to handle a gun? I served my country. He was in the Peace Corps. <laughs> this is a robbery. You 5 0? We're practically 8 0. Going in style. Rated PG 13. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most elevated SUVs ever, including the LX, GX, RX, and NX. Experience amazing. By using cheaper ingredients, we've made a lower cost pizza. Let's all celebrate with a slice. I'm allergic to triangles, so. I'm about to go swimming. Oh, I just turned vegan. Nah, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't make you eat that. <laughs> just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's better. That's why all our pizzas are handmade with better ingredients. Now get a two topping pan or large pizza made fresh, only $9.99. That's right, only $9.99. We're more than a pizza company, we're a pizza family. Papa John's. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we will be with USAA for life. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most thrilling models ever including the exhilarating IS, GS, and RC Coupe. Experience amazing. And make sure you get all the help you need with 24 hours of bracket coverage like you've never seen before. Tune into ESPN's Tournament Challenge Marathon. The fun starts Monday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. It's time once again to fill out those tournament brackets. Reminder coming up as soon as we're done here. We'll take you to the American Athletic Conference semifinal matchup between the number one seed SMU Mustangs, four seed UCF, and Taco Fall, the nation's tallest basketball player. Seven feet, six inches tall. That's a three o'clock tip right here on ESPN2, followed by UConn and Cincinnati. And out of the American, the Bearcats and SMU, two very dangerous teams, I believe, come tournament time. They can defend, they can score, experience. And back here inside of Scope Arena, we're tied at 42. A chance to go to the dance at stake for both of these teams in the MEAC title game. SMU got a little casual yesterday, and the Pirates, ah, oh, came back on them. Didn't they had win a it. chance. Didn't win it, but the Pirate Nation, <laughs> down in Greenville. The Coro comes up short for the contested layup. They tied that game after trailing by more than 20. They were out. Mike Perry's done a really nice job substituting for Jeff Lebo, who's been out most of the second half of the season with the uh, hip replacement so East Carolina they'll be back next year they'll be ready foul when it gets Jonathan Wade that'll be his first but how good has you been this year huh well you got to think too they're motivated after not being allowed yeah. to go to the tournament last season again they can defend they can score Cole now with 14 I, I think both of those teams the Bearcats with Troy Copain the way they defend the way they can score this season and then SMU, two very dangerous programs out of the American. I had a couple of games last year with Taco Fall, one of which was down in East Carolina. And, and, and you just don't realize how tall he is until you're watching him or you're close to him. Like, oh my goodness, this is what 7 6 looks like. But his wingspan, the ability to block shots and scare you out of shots should be an interesting ball game. We well, just can't venture in the paint. Elbow yeah. jumper on that for Alex Long, who has eight. Alex Long showed his versatility, had a follow-up shot a moment ago and scores and step back, makes a little 12-footer, continuing to put pressure on North Carolina Central's defense. 
Regular season matchup was won by North Carolina Central by 15 back in mid-January. One versus two here in the MEAC. Benton again missed the chippy. Williams hit the deck and travel. Turnover number 12 for Norfolk State. Driving inside, Benton's got to finish that. Maybe got a hand on it defensively. And he goes down to the floor and they call the travel. Took look and take another look at this. Now Benton, that's a second time. About the last five minutes or so, he's been at point blank range, either contested or uncontested, and he hasn't come close in either occasion. Look at Robert Jones in his fourth season with the Spartans. 17 and 15 this year. Second place finish at 12 and 4 in the MEAC. Cole, an open look. Butler clears. Here's Zanai Robinson. Been held in check in the second. Oh, what a play. Literally held here. The ball will stay with the Spartans. We talked all season. There's the jump shot in the drive. How do you stop the basketball? There's a great play by Rashawn Madison. One of the better defenders on this team, all ball defenders, had 37 steals on the year for the Eagles. That's a big time play, but possession arrow goes to Green Go. How about Jonathan Wade, his second field goal? He has five. Wade's going to have to be able to step up and make some baskets. He's going to have to end this ball game. I would dare say somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 to 20 points to win. The leading score, nearly 20 per game this season. Cole, so smooth around the rim, 16. Remember the first time he came in with elbows and knees up that time kind of kind of slow goes you off the glass and so He can score a lot of ways the player of the year. He's been very efficient today, too Robinson off the high ball screen Here comes Graff and the Eagles trailing by one and now taking the lead You think you've got the numbers on defense and they just Take the ball at you real quickly, and Graf shows elevation and scores. Huge possession for Norfolk State. Wade, an open look, get it out. Controlled by Dickerson. Just grab the basketball near the rim. Pump fake for Madison, step back, triple is good. And a four-point lead for the Eagles. Bob Jones may want to think about taking a timeout, get this momentum back. Offensive execution's not been good for the Spartans the last few times, even though they scored on follow shots. Not clean. NCCU defense clamped me down. Butler against Benton. Seven to shoot. Wade's got to touch the ball and try to make a smart offensive play. And here he is, stay on the baseline jumper, contested, well short, controlled now by Pat Cole. Eagles with momentum, Cole charging the dump off. And a hard foul means two free throws for Kyle Benton. NCCU wins this game and they're 15 or 16 seed. You top seeds better look out because they'll bludgeon you to death on defense and they'll push the pace on offense. They can score a lot of ways. Drive and score, then take it down in transition. A wide open jump shot, knocking it down. Rashad Matt. Benton at the stripe, just 47% this season. One of two in our first 20 minutes and the one miss was an air ball. Now went against Kyle Williams, his second. And now mass substitutions as Dan Robinson, the seven-footer, checks back in for Norfolk State. Long and Wade to the bench. And Jonathan Wade, just five points, and ride the pine for a few. Well, 12.38, so they're maybe trying to give him a quick blow under 12 timeout coming in 38 seconds ready. So give him a second to get himself together. They're going to need him down the stretch. Norfolk State more than two and a half minutes since its last field goal. Out of sync on offense in the second half. Yeah, their, their offense is totally out of sync, and that's because North Carolina Central's defensive pressure is more intense now. Scope Arena coming to life. The one-time home of the old ABA's Virginia Squires. Williams off the bounce. 
Wild shot as well short. Another board for Cole. They needed Dr. J and the Squires back in the day for that basket. He's somebody to elevate. Little shake and bake. Cole off the mark. And the rebound pops out to Robinson. An important sequence now for the Spartans. A Norfolk State out of rhythm, out of control, and trailing now by five. Rashad Madison, one of the early stars today. He's got nine points. A big triple here to lift the Eagles to the advantage. Let the party begin. Champ Week's biggest night begins tonight at 6 on ESPN. The stage in all its stillness. The peace around the pressure. The whisper before the thunder. These are the rules, and they tell the story at the Masters. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most refined models ever, including the LS, LX, and ES. Experience amazing. Down or not, down or not. I'm your phone. I'm alerting you your bracket's busted and I'm playing a little hide and seek. Cold. Down or not. Warmer. Down or not. Down or not. Warmer. Up. Boiling. <laughs> Jackpot. And if you've got cut rate car insurance, you could be picking up these charges yourself. <laughs> so get all state. Where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. Like me. March is mayhem. Are you in good hands? In West Philadelphia, born and raised On the playground was where I spent most of my days Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool And shooting some b-ball outside Arby's, we have the meat Do you always put cheese and grooves in your sandwich? Of course, they're chips Chips plus sandwich equals the perfect lunch Oh, don't forget the pickle It's kind of a big deal Cheese it grooves. Chips made with 100% real cheese. Dang right, it's a chip. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most elevated SUVs ever, including the LX G. Our number one seed, North Carolina Central. Stan Luter, Roy Philpott. How about the Crimson Tide? Avery Johnson playing the buckle up basketball. Hanging tough with UK over on ESPN. Here in the MEAC, the last five seasons, a Norfolk State team we talked about back in 2012. Pulled off a massive upset against the two-seed Missouri. Hampton's won it the last two years. We'll see what happens here in our final 12 minutes today. But this league, the right matchup, yeah. has done some damage in the dance. And that's what I'm saying. You know, don't get tricked by being able 15 or 16 if that's what you're projecting. They will knock you down and take you behind the woods, hide your clothes, and make you run around naked or something. <laughs> oh, my. Madison is second they triple. They beat you up. And the lead swells to eight, the largest of the afternoon for either side. NCCU's feeling it right there. Everything's going well offensively, and Norfolk State can't find the basket. No patience right now by the Spartans. And the Spartans in trouble. And Pat Cole, the MEAC Player of the Year, sensing momentum will back it out and reset. And, Roy, this is what makes them so tough. They're scoring, they're defending. Now they'll be very patient in their half court set. They'll run some time, they'll look for drives and kicks for the jumpers. Dickerson wide left. Williams corrals the board. Another important possession for Norfolk State. Talking about a moment ago, the list of champions. Remember back in the day, Coppin State knocked off South Carolina State. Thanks again. Hampton had the big win over Iowa State. This is a team, this is a conference that had some big wins. You see the Eagles, they're letting it happen defensively. And the Spartans playing hero ball right now between Robinson, Wade, and Okoro. And nothing falling as we approach the halfway point of the second. And if you're, if you're Coach Rob Jones, you got to wonder when you want to try to get Wade back in the basketball game. This is a huge possession. We talked a moment ago about one central stopped them. If they score there, they're up 10. Cole sizing up his defender, back iron. Pops out to Williams. Drive it, drive it. And another empty possession, and Butler thought it went off of NC Central. Yeah, you got to be smart with the basketball if you're a Coro. You get inside the paint, you power it up. An extra pass here is not going to happen. Well, four and a half minutes since the last Norfolk State basket. 
too close, too many defenders. Robert Jones, I think, sensing exactly what we are courtside. Momentum clearly with the other team. He'll call a timeout. The lead is eight for the Eagles, trying to punch their ticket to the dance halfway through the second. This Tuesday on Blu-ray. Some people build fences to keep people out and others to keep people in. Oh, we got recruited by a college team. A man got to take care of his family. Everything that boy do, he do for you. Fences on Blu-ray this Tuesday. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. It's back, and it's front. No, really, the Triple Double Crunch Wrap Big Box is back, and it's still all mains, no sides, with a Doritos Locos Taco, a Crunchy Taco, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Just five bucks, only a Taco Bell. Punching tickets, making dreams come true. Back here in Norfolk, Virginia, the MEAC title game, an eight-point lead for NC Central. And Stan in the midst of a 12-4 run to create the largest lead so far this afternoon. Drives inside and using the glass. In transition, getting in the paint. Scoring a lot of ways. You got your best player in the team, giving it up to one of the best three-point shooters in the conference. He dunks it, then you come up on a little baseline. Straight. Catch, turn, score. Eagles are feeling it. Lavelle Moten, year number eight, trying to get his team back to the tournament. For the second time in the last four years. Lost to Iowa State, their only appearance in school history back in 2014. They were a preseason pick number four, number five, you know who you talk to in the MEAC. But just kind of bonded together, and you felt something special out of this team when they went up to Columbus, Ohio in the first week of the season. And, and, and gave Ohio State a scare. They, they, they felt like they should have won that game. And Lavelle thought maybe this would be a team that could, could do some things special. So far, so good. Halfway through the second half, Robinson's been held in check so far. Williams caught a no man's land. Look Six how to active shoot. they are defensively. Everybody's engaged. Bacoro tosses up a desperation eve. Long in and out. And another point-blank miss. What did I tell you about the post area? You have to be able to dominate. You've got to finish those plays inside. And now they'll just slow roll it now. They probably won't get into their offensive set. No one central. They'll get it in there. But this is that little weave. They'll try to run a play. About seven, eight seconds they'll try to attack. About right there. Here we go. Bounce pass to Cole, the spin move, short again. Williams hit the deck, no whistle. And can the Spartans find their offensive rhythm? And the answer is no. Long coughs it up. And ever since Jonathan Wade went out, the Norfolk State offense has been well, well stagnant at best, and now he checks back in. Yeah, he's back in, but they were stagnant and struggling before he went out of the ball game at that 12-38 point. So they've gone a few minutes and not able to score. And here's the dilemma you also have against Central now. Their perimeter guys are such good ball handlers, Graff and Madison and Cole, that you can't put a lot of pressure on them because they'll beat you. If your bigs go to sleep and trying to stop the ball, they'll knock down a three-pointer. So you find yourself down eight, now you're down 11. You don't score, you're down yourself 13. The next thing you know, they're getting ready to engrave NCCU on the trophy. St. Luther Roy Philpott, <laughs> great to have you with us at the MEAC championship game. Winner punches their ticket, the loser is done. 
Golden State's got to have a defensive stop, and then they've got to convert off that. Madison's had the hot hand, not here. Rebound to Cole. He's missed a couple of layups in the last two minutes. Big time rebound by Robinson. They head to Long. And the lid remains on tight for Norfolk State. Here's your numbers. Against the seven-footer, Pat Cole. In attack mode, has free throws coming up. As Robinson picks up his first. And he's charging a seven-footer there, fearless. I told you, they are not going to be afraid of you. Durham. I'm not really sure about the contact. <laughs> but Got to protect the airborne shooter. He's being aggressive. He's trying to make a play. If you're Robinson, you stand your position, you time it, the ball leaves his hand, then you go up to make the block. Pat Cole, 16 points, 3 of 5 at the strike. Stanley shot the basketball 16 times in the first half yesterday in that semifinal victory. A crushing win against Maryland Eastern Shore. Already 18 shot attempts today. Well, he gets a lot of shots in transition. He gets several because of the ability that they let him go one-on-one. -on -one. They trust his judgment with the basketball, either to drive and kick or drive and make a post pass or take it to the hole. So he's going to be a volume shooter, and they feed off his play. 18 points for the MEAC Player of the Year, Pat Cole, and he'll get a breather. Ron Traps checks in, the Coastal Carolina transfer. That's 33 in gray. And for Pat Cole, he's sensing this one firmly in his favor with a 10-point lead, the largest of the game. Getting love from assistant coaches. Reggie Sharp, Dan Tharp, Eric Wilson, and my main man, Luke Delessio. At least seven minutes, excuse me, since the last basket for Norfolk State. Nine to shoot for Wade. Nothing in rhythm for Norfolk right now. Four on the shot clock. Williams a long two. Controlled by Madison. Stifling defense. They're playing everything around the perimeter. Nothing goes inside of 12 feet. Touching the paint and a kick out. And Norfolk State standing around trying to depend on jump shots with the clock winding down. There you go. Inside the ground. The lead is 12. Where will the points come from for the Spartans? Way double team. Contested shot. Wide right. The last basket for Norfolk State coming with 14.33 remaining. Wow. High screens, you sit cutters, misdirection, they get you not watching the ball, not watching the cutter, and they get the layup. Between the legs for Graf already with 15. And the foul attacking the rim. Now a pause in the action as we step aside. A 12-point lead for the number one seed here in Norfolk. Pat Cole, the player of the year. He's already poured in 18, and his team almost there. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most thrilling models ever, including the exhilarating IS, GS, and RC Coupe. Experience amazing. New in town. Witness protection program. I guess you need relocation consultation. With apartments.com, we can find something nondescript, yet extraordinarily comfortable with a 24-hour doorman and video security system. Well, if my name isn't Gary the Rat Padikoff. Oh, no. Oh, that's good. Again? Uh, don't leave this. Take this. Thank you very That'll much. It'll be useful everywhere. Change your apartment. Change the world. I joined the Army in July of 98. I did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve. Our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we'll be with USAA for life. USAA. We know what it means to serve.
Call today to talk about your insurance needs. During the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event, experience our most refined models ever, including the LS, LX, and ES. Experience amazing. Back in Norfolk, Virginia, the MEAC Championship game, a 12-point lead for North Carolina Central out of Durham, North Carolina. And the defense, Dan Luter, has been stifling so far, especially this second half. The only half. one that can play defense in Durham. Then watch there, watch Wade right here. He's going to drive. Everybody sees the basketball, okay? You're in ball, you man. Yeah, there's the drive. Stop it right there. You see there's Madison comes over with a double team. You recover on your guy. Everybody watching the basketball. Shot goes up. A force one, a rebound, and zoom! Away they go! Running back down 85 to Durham to McDougal McClinton Gymnasium and put another trophy in the trophy case. I got that feeling right there. Not giving up on Norfolk State, but I'm going to tell you what, with defense like that run by that guy, things are looking good for the Maroon and Gray. Lavelle Moten trying to get his team back to the dance for the second time. Norfolk State shooting 19% in the second half, more than eight minutes since its last basket and a 15-0 run now for the Eagles on the board. Off the glass and spinning it home is Rivas. Rivas long and athletic at 6'6", can put it to the floor. Scored well early this season. Hasn't put up the big numbers as of late, but can make up solid play. He's a really good defender. You like how I had that little Duke defense in there, Duke and playing tonight, championship week. See how I did a, a cross promotion? It comes full you circle see, you with see Stan how I did that? Yeah, you see? I enjoyed I'm it. I'm paying attention. I've learned so much from you over the years. Oh, my gosh. You see how I did that? I did. Norfolk State <laughs> in search of its offense. This was a back-and-forth affair. We had five ties, five lead changes, the majority of those coming in the second half. Until the 14-minute mark, and then the lid has been on the basket for the Spartans. When I came up here early this week, Thursday evening, it was 70 degrees in North Carolina, Virginia area. Then it was about 45, just like the temperature, the shooting percentage has been the same way for Norfolk State. They were hot early, they're cold now. Last I heard, they were shooting 19% in the second half. Your versatility is amazing. Meteorologists and also analysts Thank off another me. turnover. Cole, the bounce. Oh, the house ready to come down. Benton missed another layup controlled by Williams. That was Rivas who missed the flush. Still got a shot. Butler is short. And Cole will settle things down. How many opportunities does Norfolk State have within 10 feet? Everything doesn't have to be a dunk. But Cole, you got to score. Cole gives it right back. Here's another look at Rivas on the missed jam. Butler got in there at the last second. Well, this is a leading block shot team in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference out of Norfolk State. They've had 20 ball games where they've had five or more blocks, had 10 a couple of games ago against Savannah and also against Northern Kentucky. Interesting to say Northern Kentucky. Central beat Northern Kentucky. Northern Kentucky's already won their division, their, their conference. The Coro, a little shake and bake. Wow. Could have been a foul, no whistle. Approaching 10 minutes since the last point scored by the Spartans. An unbelievable effort defensively for North Carolina Central. Just take your time now. You're going to get back in it. There's the back cut. Beautiful pass and Graf couldn't find the basket. We'll go to the other end of the court. Watch this. Remember how we talked about everybody engaged? He didn't see the basketball. He didn't see the basketball. Too late. There's the layup. That would have been the dime of the year in this conference. Oh, no question about it. Again, I was about to say, if you want to get back in it, Norfolk, you've got to play defense. You've got to get some stops and some scores. That could have been the one that put you away. That went against Rivas. His second. Four and a half to go. To test. So you moved him off the three-point line. With 10 on the shot clock, Robinson forces one. And North Carolina Central in control of its postseason destiny.
Eagles won it by 15 in the only regular season meeting between these two. That was back on January 14th. On pace for a similar margin today. Five on the shot clock. Pat Cole. And an offensive rebound for Rivas, but he turns it over to Williams. And stolen. Graham. Four on one. Behind the back. Bitten with the jam. The trophy ready. It's going to Durham. Showtime in the scope. Jellino with the basket, and the 11 minute drought has finally ended. Finally. Timeout on the floor. North Carolina Central, a 14-point advantage. Showtime here in Norfolk. Pat Cole, the player of the year in the BX. Another dime, and the Eagles in control. Four distinct driving modes. Dynamic handling. Quicker shifts. Make every car a performance car. This is the ultra response of Acura TLX, and this is how we make it. Visit your local Acura dealer for attractive offers on the TLX. Do you always put cheese and grooves in your sandwich? Of course, they're chips. Chips plus sandwich equals the perfect lunch. Oh, don't forget the pickle. It's kind of a big deal. Cheese it grooves. Chips made with 100% real cheese. Dang right, it's a chip. It isn't always easy to know where you stand financially. Multiple accounts, investments, insurance. It can leave you wondering how it all fits together. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you see your whole picture. Find out what you truly want, and then together we design a plan to go get it. There's a confidence that comes in knowing what financial security is and doing what it takes to achieve it. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Oh, devour. So creamy. And the little sounds your crispy bacon makes drive me crazy, you naughty little. Did you just spank your lunch? Yeah. Devour. Food you want to fork. Horizon IndyCar Series kicks off tomorrow in St. Pete. Go get him, go get him. As the next wave of drivers push the limits against IndyCar's legends. Get clear, get out there. The countdown to the Indy 500 begins here. Way to go, buddy. Great job, great job. The Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, tomorrow at noon Eastern on ABC. Doug Kazarian with a studio update. SEC semifinals over on ESPN. Tight one between... Bama and Kentucky Wildcats. Malik Monk, poop and harm. Kentucky obviously in the tournament, but right now a two seed with a chance at a one. Big Ten semis, Derek Walton Jr. Michigan's unusual up and down week. Wolverines up seven. Just a reminder, the tallest man in college hoops, Taco Fall, seven foot six. And UCF getting set to face SMU. That's coming up next. Doug, thank you very much. Here's an updated look at the bracket down in Nashville, the SEC Tournament Championship game tomorrow. Alabama hanging tough with UK. Arkansas Vanderbilt over on ESPN coming up at 3 o'clock Eastern this afternoon as well. With Stan Luter, Roy Philpott. Here at the MEAC Championship game in beautiful Norfolk, Virginia. Scope Arena, once again, the scope as they call it in these parts. And the number one seed in control on the strength of this 19-2 run in the last 11 minutes. Both of these programs have been to the tournament one time exactly. Norfolk State found success with an upset against Missouri back in 2012. North Carolina Central lost to Iowa State in its only appearance in 2014. Off the miss, Butler controls. Haven't heard much out of Robinson in the second half of the ball game. He picked that third foul up and he took the steam out of his engine. 
Corner triple for Okoro. It'll make it an 11-point contest. Got to find a way to get some steals, get some baskets. Now you got 19 on the clock. You got to have a solid defensive stand. I don't think you got a foul right now for Norfolk State. And Butler, not listening to your words there, will foul Rivas. Well, you've gone that far and you didn't foul him. So you got, you know, there's 13 seconds on the clock. Go ahead and play solid defense. Maybe you missed the jump shot and you get a transition basket. Now it gives him an opportunity to score. So the new shot clock, there's no free throw. Next foul, put North Carolina Central in the bonus. Eagles have been dominant in this tournament, a pair of 30-plus point wins. And a double-digit lead here in the championship. Both of those games, they get off to quick starts and never really look back. The day they had to work a little harder for it. Cole hit the deck, no foul, and he'll turn it over. So an opening here for the Spartans. Got a couple, they got one timeout remaining. So how to use it, how to manage this clock. But you, you have to score now very quickly. Get your perimeter shooters ready and your big guys that attack the glass. Going to follow up. North Carolina Central in search of its 25th win this season. Needs to finish strong to do it. Zanai Robinson, number two for Norfolk State with possession held in check. In the last 18 minutes. Taking too long to score. Offense is bogged down, way down low. Jeleno missed the layup. Ripped away the rebound, but a hell ball. And the arrow favors North Carolina Central. And that sequence stand a microcosm of this game and for head coach Robert Jones. We talked about being able to finish plays in the paint for the bigs. They had to be able to make it. It's like this ball may have slipped out of his hands just a little bit. But again, that's why you use two hands to finish. NCCU this year has held 23 teams to 45% shooting or less. 25 actually, they're 23 and 2. Make note of that when filling out your brackets. Probably going to be a 16 seed, but certainly with experience. Can put a scare in someone if the matchups fall correctly. Foul inside and free throws upcoming for Dickerson. Now coming up, Selection Sunday, 7 Eastern, Bracketology with Reese J. Will, Jay Billis, Seth Greenberg, and company. We'll have the complete breakdowns of each region. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt starts us off at 5.15 on ESPN with a reveal of the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. Both streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You hear Jay Billis and Jay, Jay Will, Duke guys, they know of NCC. You're only about five minutes apart, the two campuses. You go back to your history books in the 1940s in the secret game with John B. McClendon, the legend. There's a lot of history between those two schools. And they'll, they've only played one time in basketball, and that was the first year as Nine Robinson makes basket. When they uh, when Central actually went to Division One, they've been playing in football the last few years. Jerry Mack's done a great job. But they've got a robbery. They watch each other. They pull for each other. North Carolina Central is going to take a title home. Duke, you're up next. The Lexus Command Performance Sales Event is here, where the feeling, craftsmanship, and luxury will last, but the offers will not. Experience uncommon refinement on our most luxurious models ever, including the LX, LS, and ES during the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event. But don't hesitate, this event ends March 31st. Get up to 2,500 customer cash and select 2017 models for these terms. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Well, after the first points for Zanai Robinson in our second half, the lead dwindles to nine. Perhaps too little too late for the number two seed, Norfolk State. Stan Luter, Roy Philpott back in Norfolk, Virginia. The MEAC championship game and head coach Robert Jones. Not the finish that he envisioned earlier today in his fourth season with the Spartans. And they felt like they had a really good shot at this. After they lost to North Carolina Central in early January, they ran ten games in a row. Came in very hot, winning eight of the last 11. So they were playing good basketball. And NCCU just dominant all season long. 
in conference play, even in non-conference play, and, and they show you why with that little spurt there midway in the second half. Foul on Way, that'll put Delvin Dickerson at the stripe, the redshirt senior, 61% at the line this year. Winner of this game, punches their ticket, the loser. We have an offseason to think about what if. Yeah. You see the patch on Dickerson's shoulder, and it's an honor of Dr. Deborah Saunders White, the former chancellor who lost her battle with cancer in November. And very instrumental in continuing to develop this program at North Carolina Central. She was loved in the four years from there. You know, you look around that campus now, there are more buildings there, more programs that have been started and now completed it, and her thought. And when she passed away, Lavelle Moten talked about it. It was, it was just like a family member. He was crushed, almost missed her game at East Carolina to get to her service. And she has loved in Durham, and they wanted to dedicate this season to Dr. Saunders White. If you ever met her, you can understand why. And so I know that she's looking at the Eagles and very proud of what this team has accomplished, football, basketball, athletically done a great job so congratulations NCCU and yeah, football won the MEAC championship you know she's looking down yeah. today smiling celebration bowl this past year NCCU goes lose a tough game to Grambling but uh, it's been a good year in a lot of ways at NCCU but there's a big void there left because of Dr. Deborah Saunders White and her passing so my thoughts still go out to her family Another free throw coming for Dewan Graff, the transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. 16 points today. And it's that experience with Graff and Cole in the backcourt. Cole was a part of that run to the Sweet 16 for the Eagles several years ago. It's that kind of experience that makes this team dangerous come tournament time, even though they'll be big underdogs. Yeah. Joe Lenardi projects the winner of this game as a 16 seed. It'll still be fun to watch and don't underestimate a team that will have won 25 games by the time they punch their ticket. Ask Missouri. Ask Ohio State. Ask LSU. Just take a look. This is a good basketball team. They've got size. They've got ball handlers. They can make plays. So, you know, we'll see what they're able to do. And, and really quickly, Jonathan Duran and, and my man Kyle Serba, the SID at North Carolina Central, thank you for your help. Matt Mahalik and Mike Bellow, appreciate you guys' help not only today but the season. And thanks to the MEAC, Commissioner Dennis Thomas, for a great tournament and a great season. Your staff's done a great job. You've done a great job continuing to move this conference. So got to give them some love late in the ball game just to tell them thank you because this has been, you know, it's been a great year at the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And Indeed it has. Too. It's been fun. Shot clock and game clock virtually identical as time winds down. And the crowd sensing this one nearly in the books. Pat Cole will dribble out the clock. And for the second time in school history, they're dancing in Durham. Our veteran officiating crew telling both teams to go back to the huddle and perhaps more time will be added onto the clock. As there was a Less than second differential between the game and shot clock there at the very end. But merely a formality at this point. Under two minutes ago, they can go back and check the replay on any kind of timing error. What a defensive effort this has been today for North Carolina Central, holding Jonathan Wade to just five points his season low. And so about 0.6 to 0.7 seconds should remain a mere inbound of the basketball, and that'll do it. So they get another chance to celebrate. And the party extended a little bit longer <laughs> in Norfolk. And a chance to empty the bench as well for Lavelle Moten. Now nice C.J. Wiggins. John Guerra.
get a chance to get their names in the box score. And instead, he'll call them off. That'll do it. They're dancing in Durham once again, an 11-point victory for the number one seed, North Carolina Central, the 2017 MEAC champions. What a performance for Pat Cole, the player of the year, poured in 18, along with DeWan Graff, 17 points to lift North Carolina Central to its second MEAC championship and second appearance coming up now in the NCAA tournament, Stan. Well, you, you win championships, as they say, with defense, and North Carolina Central just clamped down. of the year in his eighth season. Try to put a scare in Iowa State back in 2014. They'll get another chance likely as a 16th seed coming up in less than a week. Final score 67 to 59. North Carolina Central wins the MEAC. As we send you now back to the studio, here's Doug Kazarian. Roy, Stan, thank you very much. Moments away, we're going to take you to Hartford for the American Conference semifinal, semi ogile And the one seed, SMU, getting fed to face Central Florida. Golden Knights could be a bid stealer. Meanwhile, over on ESPN, the SEC semifinals, Alabama and Kentucky. Second half action, tie game. De'Aaron Fox fouled on the jumper three-point play, Joe. If Alabama should win this game, Doug, there'll be a live bid stealer on Sunday afternoon in the SEC final, regardless of what happens in the other semifinal. Another uh, hoop and harm for the Cats. Malik Monk there and Avery Johnson Jr., the coach's son. And we have a two-point game, three and a half minutes to go. Again, over on ESPN. Big Ten semifinals wide open. Richard Pitino and company have won eight of ten. Michigan, what a week for the Wolverines. Had to win a game in practice jerseys thanks to that plane scare. Nate Mason, three ball, ties the game. Other end, Derek Walton Jr., three of his own. Wolverines by five. Three-point game. Walton Jr. again off the high screen. And when you look at these two teams right now, Doug, Minnesota a six, Michigan a seven on our board. If Michigan pulls it out, we may just flip them. Wolverines coming off the upset of the one seed, Purdue, and now up five, final half minute. URI, part of Joe Lenardi's first two outs, right there on the bubble, and they are in control in the 8-10 semifinal, looking like they're going to advance. And what does this win do for URI? Are they definitely in over the bubble then? We won't have an official update until the <laughs> bottom of the hour, but we can tell your viewers right now, <laughs> Rhodey becomes the last team in, bumping Southern Cal for the night. We'll see who Rhodey plays tomorrow and how That'll they be do. Because a loss to an inferior opponent, quote-unquote, could set them back. whole lot to shake out, including Central Florida, potential bid stealer. That's coming up right now.